I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, a little bit different filming location. I got some great light, and I have a bedroom to film from because everyone's getting ready for breakfast, and I didn't want to interrupt. So we're filming from a completely different location, and today we're going to be talking about goal setting when it comes to relocation and travel. And this is a general topic. A lot of people, most people, humans in general, really struggle with the concept of identifying and setting goals. And we see this in this vlog uh, come to be something that, that really people struggle with when they're deciding where they want to relocate. The, the tools that humans tend to use to proxy goals can create some really bad results. So this is a general thing. So this applies to everyone. We're going to use relocation and a question that came up on the vlog as a tool for looking at goal setting and identifying how we should be looking at decision making for travel, but it applies to really everything in life. We're gonna to get to that right after the bump. All right, talking about goals is kind of an odd topic for a travel and relocation and Latin American living vlog. So I get why this is weird, but let me give you the question that was asked and we're gonna break it apart and then I think it'll make sense. Now, as far as I can tell, this question was quickly deleted from the vlog, but it was public and I did answer it and then I wasn't able to follow up because it just vanished. But sometimes YouTube does that, so I don't actually know what happened because it's impossible to figure out. But, and I'll leave out a little bit of specific details, but the question was, and this was on, this is really importantly, this was asked on the Myths of Residency uh, episode that we did, which is re relatively popular, and it specifically missed all the myths. It basically repeated all the myths or implied all the myths, uh, and but, but with, in this missed goal kind of way. So the question was, if I'm coming from X country, doesn't matter, right? The country you're coming from, they thought somehow mattered and, and it could, so it's worth asking, but it's irrelevant to this particular discussion in Nicaragua. Uh, if I come from X country and I invest $50,000 in buying, US, in buying a house or building a house in Nicaragua, will that give me residency on the path to citizenship? The, the quick answer is no, not at all. It's, everything is wrong with this and we'll break it down as to why. But, and then they said, well, then obviously Costa Rica must be better. Better for what? The question you ask is what would give you Nicaraguan citizenship and nothing you do in Costa Rica will ever give you Nicaraguan citizenship. So one way or another, the question that was asked can't result in then Costa Rica is better. But what were they implying was the thing that they wanted. And they were never completely clear, but let's break it down. So the first piece uh, let, let's let's answer the question piece by piece. The first piece is, well, $50,000 investment uh, in a house get you on a path to something. Let's just start with that. And the answer is no. There is no path to anything in Nicaragua that is that is done by buying or building a house. There isn't a type of residency or citizenship that considers the ownership of or the investment in property to mean anything. It's just not one of the categories that is, is used for anything. So they were being very specific. I want to do this one very specific thing. Will it get me to an unknown goal that they didn't state? And the answer was no. They picked an, an activity that was worthless for any potential goal that they may be implying that they wanted. Second piece, will this get me on the path to citizenship? No, but they didn't say why they wanted citizenship. We've done a lot of videos that talk about why you don't want citizenship and that this entire concept is generally a myth. Not that you never end up getting it, just that wanting it is fundamentally, fundamentally a flaw in the way we think. It's because it's not a goal. And then the second piece, well, I want citizenship. I want, I want this residency to get me on a path to citizenship. And again, one, basically nothing gets you on a path to citizenship that, that essentially doesn't exist in Nicaragua. No matter what you go and read in the law, in practicality, it does exist. It's not that it doesn't, but it is not like a Paraguay or a Panama, where you put in X amount of dollars, X amount of years, and magically, unless something goes horribly wrong, you have a citizenship. It's totally not like that. It is a extreme amount of unknown investment is needed, uh, a lot of time, and then it still requires essentially some massive government intervention to say, whoa, you've done so much for the country, we're gonna give you citizenship. It's, it's a very 
non-deterministic process and no one should be realistically doing a bunch of work for that purpose. If you really bring in millions of dollars and you really plan on making just massive investments that completely change the country, you're creating hundreds or thousands of jobs and you're willing to make massive commitments, yeah, you could definitely hire a lawyer, get in front of somebody and get the government to, to have a conversation about, oh, you're actually making so much effort. Let's talk about this, right? So that's plausible, but we're in the range of plausible. We're not in a, it's definitely gonna work for you. You've gotta make a big, big one-way commitment in the hopes that your guesses and your lawyer's guesses work out that the judge or whatever you're gonna to talk to is going to look favorably enough on everything that you did and say, yes, the country is currently willing to take on more citizens, which is a big thing. And at any time, the, co the country can say, no, we're not going to take any more. Now, of course, you can say that about any process anywhere. But in a lot of countries, the process is very straightforward. And it's simply you move through the system. And yeah, they could change the laws. But as long as you go through a series of steps, you know you're going to end up with citizenship at the end. Nicaragua is not like that, partially because it's a very small country. Uh, so it just it's much less formal. If you had a super large country, say China, and you were going to do that, uh, China doesn't want to have a lot of really personalized small steps. That's, that's a lot of overhead in a country like China. But when a country like Nicaragua, having a formal process is a lot of unnecessary overhead because the number of people seeking citizenship honestly, people who know what it is, know why they want it, and actually want what it brings, is only a handful. And so having a big formal process for that makes no sense. It actually takes less effort for the country to evaluate each person completely individually. So the first thing that we need to address here, and this I asked, and it's probably why he deleted the question, is I said, well, what is your actual goal? What are you trying to accomplish? And he said, I want residency and citizenship. So those aren't goals. You should never want those things. This is, I mean, at its very base, Nobody ever should use the words, I want residency or citizenship in a country. Not that you don't want what those things bring, but you should never want those things. Those are mechanisms, right? They don't have value on their own with the rare exception of, well, maybe someone, you know, you were born uh, in, in Canada, but your family is Irish and you really want to just die being Irish legally instead of just being Irish. Well, I can see why people have maybe an emotional tie to a government recognizing them as a citizen of the country only for the purpose of some emotional connection that it may bring. Okay, we're, we're going to ignore that one thing because that's clearly what's not going on here and not when you're shopping around for relocation or anything like that. That is not what you're feeling, right? That is, that is maybe a returning to your roots. I'm Swiss. You know, there is a certain emotional value. What if Switzerland was to grant me Swiss citizenship? wow, that would feel great that my homeland looked at me and said, I want this person to be a citizen. I want more connection to this person. But still, it's just a government saying that. But I understand why humans have an emotional tie to it, because I do too, right? That'd be fantastic. I would love if Switzerland did that for me. They're not going to, and I'm not going to apply for it. But it, it would feel good. But so the real thing is here is what humans do, and this is where we get really important in decision making. What we do is we start to identify goals. Now, we don't know what this person's goals are because he was completely 100 percent unable to articulate them in any way whatsoever. He wasn't even able to imply what they were. So we're really in the dark because he was clearly looking for something he didn't understand. But what humans do is we identify a thing that we want. And this, this is way beyond relocation, has nothing to do with this. This is, I work in business, I teach people how to do decision making, and this is something we see come up constantly, is we'll have a goal that we know. So for example, in a business, we might say, ooh, I want to make big profits. Okay, great, big profits, that's a sensible goal, right? Because at the end of the day, those big profits are the thing that you can use to buy stuff. Still, at the end of the day, that's not your goal. Your goal is to be able to buy more stuff, but there's a barrier between the business where you make the money and you spending it personally. And so you can have a, it's a spot where a goal can make sense. This is where an, an intermediate goal can exist uh, that ultimately leads to your real goal of just a more luxurious, more comfortable life, or maybe you get to own a cooler car or whatever. Uh, so the, uh, the goals in relocation could be, I want uh, a place where I can live forever. 
I want uh, to be allowed to do anything I want in that country. I want to be able to travel from that country. I want to, uh, who knows, I want to uh, give up my tax status in another country, so on and so forth. So all those things, what happens with most people is the way the human brain works, and it's a very dangerous thing, but it's important because in, in our uh, caveman days, we also had goals, but our goals were much simpler. Our goals were things like, I'd like to survive the day. And one of the ways that we proxy that, and this is the reason our brain is wired to do this, is that if we sat around and said, how do I maintain my safety? It's a big question. You spend a lot of time thinking about all the things that could go wrong. Your brain is engaged. And then when something dramatic happens, you're not really well prepared for it. You can't react really quickly. And reacting quickly is very important when you're a caveman and your threats are things like, you know, tigers. So when you're uh, a caveman, you survive best if you proxy the idea of safety, the fundamental goal, I want to live through the day and say, how do I do this practically? Well, I build fires and when I hear tigers, I run like crazy. Okay, so the people who built fires to make animals less likely to come to them and ran like crazy when one did come at them, survived better than those who spent a lot of time thinking, hmm, I'd like to be safe, how do I do that? I hear a sound of a tiger, how should I apply wanting to be safe with this? Should I run away? No, you wanna make that distilled to an instant reaction. So we carry this caveman thinking into the modern world, our brain is still wired to do this. So we say things like, oh, I want to be able to live in a country and, and I want to live there like I've always been there and have all the, the things that I'm used to being in a place. I must want to be a citizen because in some places that is a good mechanism for getting that. It's plausible that citizenship in some circumstances will be the mechanism that provides your goals. The problem is, is that you get this often not from any particular country, not from any particular situation. It is a very general concept of this might exist. People talk about it in this really, really kind of cloudy way, nebulous way. And then people who are thinking about it say, okay, what I want is citizenship. And they forget that they actually have real goals. And they forget that citizenship doesn't exist on its own. It is something that is unique to every country. So you can't ask um, about citizenship in a random country and have it mean anything because it's different. It's just like residency. They're different in every country with the exception of all citizens do get local passports, but nobody wants any random passport. You always want a specific one. Passports are specific. A Nicaraguan passport or a Mexican passport or an American passport or an Indian passport are incredibly unique, even with like the Mexican passport being one of the most powerful in the world, really, really desirable passport, and Nicaraguan being an incredibly not desirable passport, it lets you go very, very few places. Even between them, there are still cases where, well, the places that you want to travel to may be limited, and the Nicaraguan passport may be the one that lets you go there because it has a different set of places that you can go very easily than the Mexican one. The Mexican one is almost always the better choice from a travel perspective because it's one of the most travel-friendly passports in the world. People are very welcoming the world over to Mexicans because they tend to be very good tourists, they tend to have a good bit of money, and as a collective, they are a giant economy in the trillions of dollars a year and growing like crazy. Mexico is doing fantastic right now. So the Mexican passport is incredibly powerful for really good reasons and in many Many cases is better than an American passport depending on where you want to go and how you want to be perceived. An American passport sometimes gives you a little bit more power, whereas a Mexican passport makes you a little bit more accepted. It's a balance at some point. And a lot of cases, you don't have a lot of choices. You have to take what you're able to get. That's kind of how passports tend to work. The point here is that every one of these scenarios is completely unique. So if you take your caveman thinking and distill, I want these features in my life, I think the thing that's gonna give that to me is a, is a uh, residency or a citizenship, you have significantly flawed distillation or proxying of your goals into a practical sense. You cannot use that in that way. And people do this in business, people do this in all kinds of things. In the caveman world, running from tigers and having fires to stay safe, those tended statistically to work out really well because they're very simple and you had a, a predictable way to say, well, we over time experimented with these things. These are the things that work. You teach your children and they just do this, right? And it didn't change. 
But when we're talking about citizenship and residency, these things are not things that anyone gets taught. They are not straightforward. And the majority of the time, they don't do the things that you expect them to do or that we anticipate that they do or things that we want. And so it can be very confusing. So this is a bad distillation. And in this case, I can only imagine the things that the person asking the question were, were looking for or things like, well, I want to be able to be guaranteed that I can stay there. I want a passport. I want to be able to travel on a different passport. I want a backup plan. I want to, and all of these things are not serviced. All of these things are listed in my myths of residency and citizenship videos. We've covered all of these, how none of them apply. And yet they had distilled them. And in the exact question that they asked was about in Nicaragua. So when they then said, well, uh, Costa Rica would be better for this, I have no idea what it is that they've distilled. I'm guessing as to what their goals are, because being able to live in Costa Rica or Nicaragua doesn't require those things. Being able to uh, get a passport, well, in Nicaragua and Costa Rica isn't possible, right? Costa Rica is actually harder to my understanding. I've never tried. But from looking up the law, Costa Rica appears to be actually harder than Nicaragua to get citizenship. But residency is pretty easy, but not as easy as Nicaragua. So the question, but it's possible that Costa Rica will accept the purchase of a home. Only possible. I don't know the, the Costa Rican rules. I just know that Nicaragua doesn't allow it anymore. In theory, maybe Costa Rica allows you to buy a really expensive house, but I don't imagine anywhere in the range that they were thinking of spending. $50,000 is an incredibly small purchase of a home to qualify for residency, especially residency that you think is going to take you on a path to citizenship. So I don't think that Costa Rica meets any of the things that they said they were looking for. It certainly doesn't give you Nicaraguan citizenship. And buying a house, I don't think gets you on a path to residency. And I know that residency doesn't get you on a serious path to citizenship in Costa Rica. So none of the things that they stated in any way is better in Costa Rica. Why they jumped to that, I have no idea. But that's where they went. Uh, but then the things that they might imply, well, they want who knows, right? What they imagine because they don't do this, right? But they're imagining that citizenship and residency do something that they haven't told us. Maybe they want uh, the freedom to travel on a passport. Maybe they want a more powerful passport. Maybe they want some protection from the government. Maybe they think they're going to get the right to vote. Maybe they think that it gives them some discounts. Who knows? Maybe they think they can buy in places that they couldn't otherwise. I have no idea. We're really guessing. And that's the problem. We're completely guessing at what their goals might be. And they were unable to when I said, what are your goals? Instead of what are these mechanisms, they, that's when the post disappeared. They didn't want to. And humans are really big on this, believe it or not. Working in business, this is a consistent problem that we have, is when you ask people to articulate their goals, stop, think, and tell me what you're actually trying to achieve, many people freeze up and actually panic and go into a shutdown mode. And this is something that, especially with something big like relocation or getting married or buying a house or, or going to university, these are not times where you want to shut down and turn off your brain and go into panic mode and say, I'm, I'm not going to think about this. I'm just going to make a decision. It, like That's the absolute worst thing. Huge life decisions like what, what nationality you're going to be is something you really need to stop and think about. This is one of the biggest life decisions you could possibly have. And yet people often, maybe the majority of the time, do so without even taking the slightest moment to stop and think, does this thing do the thing that I want to do ultimately? And I never sit down and articulate, here's the things I want to do. So if you did have some goals, and, and if you really stop and think about what you, and this, you do this in everything in life, right? This is what catches university students. You ask university students or their parents, what are your goals? Oh, I want my kids to have the brightest future. If you then come back and say, well, it looks like statistically your particular life path that you want to have this bright future in isn't best served by university, you would do better without it, maybe by being a plumber or studying on your own or becoming an intern, who knows, they will often, almost always come back and say, well, I'll change my goals then, right? You're going to change your mind. I don't want to be happy. I don't want to be successful. What I want is university. Like, why? That's a mechanism should never be a goal. And yet people proxy it as a goal. And, and the danger of proxying a goal is that you forget, and this is your brain works this way intentionally, you forget what the actual goal is so you don't get distracted. And you can focus on the thing that's tangible. And that's practical if you've distilled it properly and made a good decision. But if you're doing something like, I want citizenship, and 
that citizenship is is it maybe the thing that you saw was that in England the citizenship that England offers would give you the goals it would meet your goals but maybe you don't like the weather in England that's a great example right okay I don't like the weather in England but citizenship in England would meet my goals and maybe that's correct right but then you say well I'm going to take citizenship in England and turn it into citizenship anywhere. Now I'm going to look for weather that I like, Nicaragua and Costa Rica, and I'm just going to go blindly into citizenship there, assuming that it does exactly the same things that it does in England, which is absolutely not likely at all and definitely not true. That is where it becomes very dangerous. So, so what is our takeaway from this? How do we take this information and make it actually useful. Well, a lot of this requires some self-reflection and taking a moment, especially when you're asking questions in the vlog like this and you want to get good answers. If we come back with more questions, instead of reacting emotionally, stop and say, oh, maybe there's actually something that I asked that they can't answer based on what I asked. Or maybe they are perceiving that I'm stating something as a goal that doesn't make sense as a goal. Citizenship and residency being prime examples. Absolutely never should you ask someone how to get those things and not be able to answer why you want them. Now I understand, maybe you want them and you simply just want answers, but I'm not a paid advisor, right? So you don't get to dictate what advice I'm going to give you, right? If you ask me, how do I get you know, citizenship in Nicaragua, I'm gonna say, well, what is it you're actually trying to do? Because that's not a logical goal for 99.9999% of the potential people. Literally, there is no one on my channel who has ever spoken to me who had a reason why they would want to go for citizenship. Residency, yes, for tons and tons of people, it makes sense, but not for the people who are actively on my channel. Normally, it's people who have maybe seen my channel, moved to Nicaragua, spend some time, and then they're like, okay, we've determined that residency does make sense at this point, right? But my show hasn't been running long enough for there to be more than one or two of those people, right? The number of people who have moved to the country because of my channel, watch my channel, and are now at the point of needing to get residency or residency making sense for their goals and the needs is very few. It will increase a lot as time goes on, but it, it, even that is rare. And in all cases, we should step back and say, okay, if we were being good advisors, so I work in IT, and when businesses come to us and ask questions, the first thing we always have to say is stop, what is your actual goal? Let's make sure we're all on the same page. Because in most cases, when a business comes to us and says, hey, here's a, here's a project we need to do, here's a thing we need to do. Well, if we're just mechanics and we're just here to enable whatever bad decision you've made, well, great, we're just gonna you know, burn your company to the ground if that's what you say, right? Hey, can we make a bonfire in our living room? <laughs> Look, man, you're just paying me to buy the hour to make a bonfire? I don't care if it burns down your house. But if you pay me as an IT professional, that means advisor. If you're not advising, you're not an IT professional, right? And if you're not in a business context, you're not an IT professional. That's what IT professional means. And in the same vein, that's how I treat being a relocation and travel vlogger I'm not here to simply, you know, set you up for failure. I'm not going to give you the noose so you can go hang yourself, right? Now, if you pay me by the hour and say, look, I'm gonna pay you by the hour and the last thing I want is your opinion. I just want you to answer the questions I dictate because I trust your advice, but I don't trust your opinion on your advice. That's a really weird thing. Really, why would you do that, right? Like that's a really strange thing to feel that you have enough knowledge to know what to ask. And this is a big thing in business too, right? So this is a general thing. If you need to ask a question, in most cases, you lack the information to know exactly what question to ask. And that's normal. And so it's, it's not something you should be like, oh, I'm so embarrassed I can't ask now, I'm so upset about that. No, this is how humans are, right? So if I ask you, right, oh, I need to get a car uh, to do this thing, you really, you should step back and say, oh, why do you think you need a car? And yeah, there's a really good chance that if I've identified that a car is what I want, there's a good chance that a car makes sense for me. Sure, but there's a chance that it doesn't as well. And maybe I haven't run the numbers, or maybe I'm not aware of some public transportation that I could be using or should try out first. Or maybe I didn't know that hovercraft are now available and I should look into that because it'll, it'll beat traffic, whatever. There's information that if I'm asking you advice, chances are you have information that I don't and maybe that information changes what I felt the final decision was. Same thing with travel and relocation, same thing with IT. So if you're coming to me and asking me, hey Scott, how do I 
buy a house in Hinotega? How do I find the right place? Well, there's a bunch of questions that I'm going to ask you. Why do you think you want to buy a house now? It doesn't mean buying a house is a bad thing, but what makes you think this is the timing to do that? Why do you need to buy a house when you need to also ask me where to get it, right? What, what puts these things together? And there are absolutely cases where that makes sense, but they're the rarity. They're not the norm. Most of the time when I ask these questions, we step back, well, here are my goals. Once stating goals and we really sit down and say, okay, what's the best way to meet those goals? Doing the thing that people think they want to do doesn't seem to be the action that gets them to their goals best. And so it's a very important thing. It's just this is a part of the process. So expect when you ask questions that there's going to be, well, what is, what is it you're trying to accomplish? And I just had one of these. Someone wanted to open a business, right? And it's really, to me, super clear and obvious that it violates every business rule, every bit of advice anyone should be giving them in just common sense as to running a business for the purpose of profit, of course, uh, you wouldn't do this. It, it's, it doesn't accomplish, it doesn't meet a market need, it doesn't uh, bring special skills, it doesn't leverage some advantage, it doesn't overcome any of the inherent problems that they would have uh, as negatives. Like it, it checked every box of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But the question is, so what are your goals? I have businesses, foolishly, that don't make money, that are terribly unprofitable, but my goal with them is different than making profit. And I probably still shouldn't have done it, right? So I'm not saying it's a great idea. But what I'm saying is that there were different goals, and that's what we evaluated on. We said, oh, we have a restaurant that, yeah, it doesn't make money, but it has food that I want in a place where I wouldn't get that food otherwise. And my other option is having someone cook for me at home all the time or me learning how to do it. Those aren't things I want to do. Having a restaurant that's in a place I want to go to is fun and rewarding on its own. And as long as it's serving food that I want in a venue that I want, that might be a great way to meet my needs. And while that's incredibly silly, and I don't recommend but most people do that, it is a different goal than making profit. And so if you came back, this person in this example, which is different than the relocation example, if you came back and said, oh, I don't want to make money. I mean, I don't not want to make money, sure, but I don't want to make money. I really want to have a means to have this type of business because I find it fun, I find it rewarding, I feel that there's a means of giving back to the community and this is a way I could do it. Like there's a whole bunch of potential reasons that running a business that isn't profitable could meet goals that we don't know about. But if you don't state those goals, nobody knows what to tell you. No one knows how to give you advice. And this is a problem we run into in IT all the time. Most businesses, uh, because uh, just real quick, most businesses are small. Right, The number of businesses that are really large are actually few and far between. For every large business, there's a hundred little ones. And so when you talk about averages, it ends up being little businesses outweigh the big ones in the averages really quickly, at least in the medians. If you do it by employee, uh, the mean gets a little bit closer, but still, you lean towards small business behavior. And the average small business especially, but even the average business in general, isn't out to make money. Really, you would not believe this, but that's actually true. And they're what we call non-real business. We call businesses that are there to make a profit, we call real businesses. Businesses that are not to make a profit but have a different goal because by law, businesses are supposed to have profit, we call them hobby businesses. That means that they're incorporated and running legally as a business, but they have done something to legally allow themselves to not go after fiduciary responsibility, which is totally allowed in the United States if you're a private company, and you can set other goals internally. And those goals could be I just want to employ people. I would like to be able to tell people at the country club over martinis that I own a business that does who knows what. Name the thing that you think is really cool. I design skyscrapers. I want to have an architectural firm. Great. You can go start an architectural firm that has never gotten a client, that has one engineer who designs skyscrapers that no one ever buys. And when you're having martinis and someone says, what do you do for a living? We design skyscrapers. Wow, that's amazing. Which ones have you built? Well, we've never actually built any. But hopefully the questions don't go that far, right? You just want to be able to say you have that firm. And if you have enough money to build a business that does nothing and just loses money and just lets you say the things you want to say, I'm the CEO of an architectural firm. Wow, that's cool, whatever. And I know people, I know lots of people who do exactly that, maybe not at the country club, but that's all they want. 
I know ones that, that they just want to be able to have a title. They don't care that it loses money. I know ones where they just want to hang out with their buddies and they don't care if they do any work. It's just a reason for them to go to work. The one person, and this is a great example of how is it this happens because you say, that's crazy. His wife is super affluent. She has tons of money. And if he's left to his own devices, he either gets in her way or does something foolish. So instead, she gives him a large amount of money, but that money has to be used to run a business. She doesn't care if that business makes money or not. It does not. He has a bunch of his buddies hang out there. He pays them medium salaries. They're all doing just fine. They don't want to look for other jobs because they're not required to do any work. And basically, he and about 10 of his closest friends hang out and have a fun work day together. And he doesn't get in trouble. He, they have flexible time. He's able to take vacation whenever he wants because there's no real clients to have to worry about. They have a good time. And that's a way to keep him out of trouble. It's actually a good use of money. For her, it's potentially a smart business decision. For him, he gets to act like he's a successful businessman and doesn't have to live in the shadow of his wife in public. He can go places and brag about how he's a CEO and how he has all these employees and they do all whatever it is that they want to do. And it doesn't matter if they have clients or serious clients or good clients or if they do a good job or not. People don't dig into that. So hobby businesses are much more popular than you think. And uh, that kind of thing, understanding the goal in IT, we can still service companies like that, but we have to sit down with them and say, what is your goal? Because when we come in and say, we're going to help you become profitable, that's when they fire us. Oh, we, what, are you, what is wrong with you? Why are you making these decisions? Now people are going to have to work. Now that we're going to have to do this thing. We have to, do, we have to undergo change. Why would we do that? Well, because we're going to make you money. I don't want to make money. I, I, what are you thinking? Right? And you actually get that reaction because their goals aren't public. And they're hiding their goals. But if they came to us and said, look, I want this to be as easy as possible. I want no one to have to think or work. Just do the things that make us happy, and we're going to be happy with you. Oh, my gosh, great. Give us clear goals. We'll meet those goals. right? You just have to tell us. Otherwise, we have to work from a guess or work from fiduciary responsibility. Same thing with relocation. right? you got to figure out what your goals are. Your goal is, I want to be by the ocean. I want to be warm. And I want to be able to stay indefinitely. Great. Those are great goals. Those are things that you can distill to meaningful goals that actually work for you. And then we can sit down and say, okay, what country meets those potential goals? And what mechanism within that country? Tourism, residency, citizenship, something else is the mechanism for allowing you to do that. That's the mistake that was made in the question that was asked. They wanted to specifically invest one amount of money. Now, the amount of money they have to invest might be a hard limit. I have $50,000. That's it. Where can I use $50,000 to get my goals? Okay, so that makes sense. But they made it specifically that it had to be in buying a house. Well, why did you make it specifically buying a house? That's a very specific type of investment that a lot of places will allow and a lot of places will not. It can go either way. So that's that's a you can't distill to that. Now, I understand you may want a house, but you can always rent your home and invest $50,000 in a business. And in theory, in some places, that business may actually make money. Probably not, right? Especially if you're not able to identify your goals, you probably should rethink going into business. That's a bad combination of things. But if that's what you want to do, at least investing $50,000 into a business and honestly putting in an effort, but that's the problem. It, it does take effort. Uh, you have a decent chance of not losing that investment and you get tax write-offs in most cases, not all, again, goals, uh, and, um, and you have a place to live. So there, even if you only have $50,000 to work with, potentially you can still handle differences in investment rules if $50,000 is significant enough for that country. But if you make the requirement that it has to be invested in a certain way and the country has a requirement that it has to be invested in a different way, that's a mismatch. That's why you don't want to distill those goals. Stay focused on your goal. And then saying it's got to lead to residency. Well, what if that, what, do, what is your purpose for wanting residency? Well, because I want to get to citizenship. Oh, wow. This is so many steps of wrong in your thinking. If those are really the goals, we just got to step back and say, what is the actual goal and figure out how we meet those. So I know that seems like a lot more work, but it's not. There's no short circuiting determining your goals and figuring out how to get to them. There's just a process of doing it quickly and efficiently by setting your goals and figuring out what meets them. And there's a really inefficient way by not actually identifying your goals, randomly doing things, having disaster happen to you, and then having to do it all again as you try to get to your goals randomly when you haven't identified them. That's definitely the hardest process anyone could possibly imagine. 
I know this was a very dry topic for the day, but it is one of our slow days for the show, so uh, sometimes it's good to put these out on a slow day. But this question came up, and I felt this was a really important topic to mention because so many, this was an extreme example, and that he deleted it because he was apparently so embarrassed that he didn't know what his own goals were, uh, was, was a pretty big deal. But the idea that you're going to ask questions and you're going to need to st you know come back with what your goals are uh, is something that you need to understand because it's going to make your processes whether it's just your own thinking or going to someone like me with questions like i understand you, you may not have thought about your goals so you should expect when, when i come back and say well what are your goals what why is it you want to do this don't feel that that's like this indictment of your idea it's i can't honestly help you. No one can honestly help you do these things. And this is why a real estate agent is dangerous. I don't know any real estate agent that's going to say, stop. Are you sure that buying a house is what you want? No, because they get paid by selling you the house. Their job is to sell you a house that you may not even need or to sell you a bigger one than you thought you could afford. Right? That's how they make their money. Literally, they make their money convincing you not to think about your goals and not to think about what's best for you and to spend faster and more than you would if you were being rational. That's literally their job. And, and the term for someone who's paid to do that is someone on commission. So if you have a real estate agent and they have commission, they are open and public that that is what they do. So they have announced to you by taking commission that they are out to take advantage of you as hard as they can and that you are, by giving them a commission, paying them to do so. It is at your request, right? But that type of thing is exactly why they're never going to ask what your goals are. They don't care. You've put money on the table that says, my goal is to pay you as much as possible that you can get out of me. They don't know why you want to do that, but they're definitely going to accept it. When you're asking me, because I'm not getting paid by commission to do any of this, if you ask a question in the vlog, I have to, in most cases, come back and say, I don't know what your end goal is, so I can't really answer what the best process is or what the, the mechanism is or how to do these things, because I don't know if these things will meet your goals or not. I don't know what best is, because best is determined by your goals. So I need to elicit more information. I need to solicit more information from you, both, I guess, and, and then be able to sit down with goals. And, and that's just normal. And normal humans will struggle to tell what their goals are, at least at first. They have to have a little back and forth. Oh, I thought residency was my goal, but I see what you mean. Well, I think residency will give me this. That's the ultimate goal, the thing that actually matters to you, the ability to stay in country, the ability to eat good food, the ability to make more money, whatever. Things that actually matter to your life, not that you have a legal piece of paper that calls you a citizen under these certain circumstances or calls you a resident under these other circumstances or so forth. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, it would be much appreciated. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That's what allows me to keep giving out advice without actually getting paid or taking a commission. Uh, and uh, as always, uh, post on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Watch one of the extra episodes at the end, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And hopefully, if I set this up correctly, four videos are up on the screen. Just pick one, and that will help us make this show uh, and tell the algorithm that it matters to you.